Hello, good morning. So thanks all for coming. So today I'm presenting some of the homework three exercises on pigeonhole principle for you. And if you want to challenge yourself, yeah, you can take a pause here or you can visit this uh, tutorial later. But anyway, if you want to go with us together, yeah, let's do so. So I'm selecting three of the problems in the homework. So the first one is this, this question. So we want to show if we are selecting n plus 1 integers from 1, 2, 3 up to 2n, then no matter what happens, we must be able to find two of these numbers such that they don't have any common factor. Okay, so for this question, it is not true if we are selecting n integers. So when we are selecting n integers, one possible way that we are selecting is we are selecting all the even numbers. Then no matter what two numbers are chosen, then, then these numbers will always have a common factor of 2. But in, in contrast, if we are selecting n plus 1 integers, then we have enough numbers to choose. And among them, there must be 2 such that they don't have any common factors. So we want to show this. Another question is a practice uh, similar to a problem we have discussed in the class. Here, we want to show in a group of 10 people, where any two people, they are either friends or enemies. So any two persons, let's say A and B, either A and B, they are friends, or if A and B, they are not friends, then they must be enemies of each other. We want to show that no matter what happens, so in this group of in this group of ten people, we must either be able to find three mutual friends. So we can find three three people inside such that they are friends of each other, or we must be able to find four mutual enemies such that we can find four people such that any two of them they are enemies of each other. So of course, three mutual friends. So if you have four mutual friends, then it is also okay. So three mutual friends means that you can find three of them. So we don't care about the remaining. Okay, similarly, four mutual enemies, you can have five mutual enemies or even 10 mutual enemies. That's okay. And you can also have a case where you have three mutual friends at the same time, four mutual enemies together. Okay, but what we want to say is no matter what happens, at least one of these two cases will happen. And then the third problem here is question 15. This time we want to show when we have 100 people, if any two people will shake hands at most once. So any two person, they, they must either uh, shake hand or they do not shake hand at all. Okay. Then we can find two people who shake hands the same number of times. Okay, so these are the three questions that I want to talk about today. Let's begin. Okay, so we will start with this question. Choosing n plus 1 integers from 1 to 2n. Now all the problems here are solved by using pigeonhole principle. So for this problem, the key idea is we are selecting n plus 1 integers and then we want to show we can find two such that they have a certain property. The property is they don't have common factors. So the basic idea here is let's try to design n holes such that the holes are referring the case where numbers inside the same hole will have no common factors. And because we are selecting n plus 1 integers, so we will be able to find at least two numbers falling into the same hole. And in this case, we are happy. We can find two numbers without any common factor. So what are the holes that we can think about? So we want to create holes such that within the same hole, the numbers, so we are going to distribute 1 to 2n into these n holes, right? But we want to have a correspondence such that the same hole represent numbers with no common factor. How can we get 
numbers with no common factor. Of course, if you choose one and another number, then they don't have any common factor. So common factor means it is the factor that is greater than one. So one with another number, it doesn't have. But the simplest way is this observation. Any two consecutive integers, they do not have common factors. Yeah, because let's say I have two integers, let's say 17 and 18, okay. If they have any common factor, then the common factor must divide the difference between these numbers. But the difference of two consecutive numbers is 1. So that you cannot find any number greater than 1 that can divide 1. So in that case, two consecutive numbers do not have any common factors. So in that case, we are done. The reason is that we can partition or we can separate the 2n numbers, 1 to 2n, into n groups. The first group contains the two numbers 1, 2, and then the next group 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Each group represents a collection of two consecutive numbers. Now when n plus 1 integers are chosen, using our grouping, we must be able to find a certain group with two numbers selected. Yeah, because we have n groups only, and we have n plus 1 integers, so a certain group. Or there can be more than one group, okay, but at least there is a certain group with two integers selected, and then these two integers are having no common factor. So we are done. Okay, so this is a this is a simple proof. Yeah, usually pigeonhole no principle uh, requires us to have creative thinking. The hardest part is to create a host. And after you have creating the host, the argument is usually simple so so yeah get more practice so that you can you can be become more creative okay now let, let's talk about so this is question 10 so let, let's talk about question 13 we have a group of 10 people and we want to show that either three of them are mutual friends or four of them are mutual enemies this question is very similar to a question that we have discussed in the classroom so in that at that time we have six people and then we want to show that we must be able to find three mutual friends or three mutual enemies okay so we change it to 10 now and then one of them changes to from three to four okay okay so let's see how we can solve this problem we are using a similar idea as we 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 saw this in the in the classroom so we consider a particular person P. So there are 10 people. One of them is P. Okay. I claim that one of the following cases must happen. So the first case is P has six or more enemies. Okay. So I have P isolated. So P is going to see nine other people. So the first case says P has six or more enemies. Now, if it is not true, then in that case, P can have at most five enemies. So in that case, P will have at least four friends. Is that okay? So if P has six or more enemies happen, then we have case one. Otherwise, P has five or less enemies. So in that case, P will have four or more friends. We want to show that no matter which case is happening, then we will have, we will have the original uh, statement to, to happen, we will, we will see that either we can find three mutual friends or four mutual enemies. Okay, so let's look at case one. Case one says P has six or more enemies. Now, for this case, P has six or more enemies. So let's find six enemies of P. We find six of them, any six of them. Now, using the result from the classroom, among these six enemies, okay, so there must be three mutual friends or three mutual enemies. Now, if we can have three mutual friends, then we are done because our problem statement says that we can find three mutual friends. On the other hand, if the six enemies, we can find three mutual enemies, then these three people together with P will form four mutual enemies. So we are also done. Okay. So when case one happens, when someone has six or more enemies, then we're done. Okay? 
let's take a look of case two. Case two says so. Case one, P has six or more enemies. Case two, P has six or six or oh sorry, some type of six or more friends. Okay. Now, if P has six or more friends, then let's take a particular four friends from P. And among them, we can find either two mutual friends. Okay, so among these four friends of P, so these four friends of P, they, they can have any type of relationship with each other. So the first case that we claim here is, maybe we can find two of them, they are friends. Or any two of them, they are not friends. That means that all these four people, they are mutual enemies. Now, if the second case happens, then we have four mutual enemies and we are done. On the other hand, if the first case happens, we have two mutual friends from these four people, then together with P, then we have three mutual friends, then we are also done. So it says that in case two, we can always find either three mutual friends or four mutual enemies. So no matter which case one or case two happens, then we are done. Okay, so this is the proof of the, the question. Now indeed, this problem, you can make it a little bit tighter, okay, and make it more challenging. So in fact, if we have a group of nine people only, it is also true that there are three mutual friends or there are four mutual enemies. It is also true even if we have fewer number of people, the same observation must occur. Now, how do we show this? So, so we are using our observation from question 13. Now we have nine people now, but the same argument will still hold. If there is some person P with six enemies or four friends, then the result will be correct. Yeah, if P has six enemies, then we go through with case one, then we are done. If this P has four friends, then we go through with case two, and then we are done. Is that okay? So the only case that happens is we cannot find anyone with six enemies or with four friends. So there are nine people here. So if we isolate a particular person, then we will see exactly eight other people. Now for these eight people, when we do not see six enemies and we do not see four friends, then what does that mean? It means that everyone, suppose to the contrary that we don't find any six, so there is nobody with six friends, as there is nobody with six enemies or with four friends. So everyone has exactly five enemies and three friends. Is that okay? Now what will happen? So let's take a look of the number of friends relationship that we can find. Okay, so any two person, they are either friends or enemies. If the two person forms a friend, a relationship, we add it by one. If they are enemies, then we don't add anything. So we count the number of pairs such that they are friends of each other. Is that okay? Now, there are nine people all together. And then each people, uh, each of these people has three other people as friends, as friends, okay. So for each person, it forms three friend relationship. So altogether, there are nine times three friends relationship. Oh, but we are over counting because for a friend relationship, it is formed by two person. So we count it once from one person and count it another time from the other person. So to count the number of friends relationship correctly, we must divide it by two. So altogether, there are nine people. Each one forms three friend relationship. So altogether 27, but we have to divide it by two. So we get 13.5. But this is not possible because the number of friend relationship must, uh, must be a whole number. I, there can be one relationship, two relationships, seven relationships, but there cannot be anything like 0 0.5 relationship. So when we have seen this happening, then we see that it is impossible. So this is impossible. It implies that everyone has exactly five enemies and three friends. 
cannot be true. So in that case, we show that we must be able to find someone with six enemies or four friends so that the result will also be correct. Now, we have question 15. So for question 15, I do not write down the proof because it is very easy to understand. But let's take a look of what will happen. So in a group of 10, uh, sorry, 100 people, any two people shake hands at most once. So the number of times that a person can shake hands with the other person could range from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 100. So there are actually how many cases? Oh, sorry. That can only be 100 because there, there's only 100 people, right? So from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 99. Okay, so the possible number that a person can choose as the shaking hand number is from 0 to 99. So there are 100 choice. Oh, but we have 100 people. So if we want to apply pigeonhole principle, then 100 people, 100 choice, there is no guarantee that two people will shake hands the same number of times. So it doesn't look like we can apply pigeonhole principle to solve this problem here. But this is not true, okay? Because we have a very clever observation. If a certain people, oh, sorry, if a certain person shake hands zero times, what does that mean? It means that every other people cannot shake hands with this guy. So for any other people, the number of shaking hand numbers could range from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 98, because nobody can have 99. So if someone has shaking hand number to be 0, then it means that everyone will have shaking hand number ranging from 0 to 98. So there are 99 choices only. So in this case, two people must have the same shaking hand number. Okay? Now in contrast, if someone has shaking hand number to be 99, then this person is going to shake hands with every other people around. So in that case, nobody can have 0. So if someone has 99, then it means that all the handshaking numbers must be between 1 to 99. So there are also 99 choices. And because there are 100 people, 99 choice, that means that two people will have the same choice. So in conclusion, we will see that we cannot have shaking hand numbers of 0 and shaking hand number of 99 to happen together at the same time. So in any case, the number of shaking hand choice is at most 99. And with 100 people, it means that two people must be selecting the same handshaking number. Okay, so the challenge here is not designing the holes here, but the challenge for this problem here is the observation that 0 and 99 cannot happen together. Okay, so that's all for today's uh, tutorial.